All right, gentlemen, it's time to step it up a notch. This is actually my first suit I've ever bought myself. So I want to kind of break down for you why I bought this brand, what you should look for in the first suit, and what price range you, what you should actually look for. Now I'm going to say some things that are different from what the top fashion YouTubers may say. And this has to do with a lot of research, but it also has to do with a lot of principles that they have mentioned too. So this is my first suit. Um, my parents started off low income. They were immigrants and they didn't have a lot of money uh, starting off. They worked themselves up to be quite successful. However, when they started out for most of my life, it was just about hand-me-downs. Therefore, I do have two hand-me-down suits. But the problem with suits is that if they don't fit your specific body type, you're kind of screwed. If they're too long or short, they just make you look horrendous because they're too baggy or they're too tight and they won't even you won't even fit into it. For me, they were way too uh, baggy. And I think clothing is one of those things that if you want to look good, it doesn't have to cost as much as you think, but it cannot be something that doesn't fit and therefore hand-me-downs are one of those things that fail to make that test happen so I'm gonna step back a little bit so I'm in frame and I want to talk to you about uh, the importance of a suit now other channels have kind of uh, beaten this to a death but I want to take a different spin on this and actually highlight the book the evolution of desire by David M Buss now what David M Buss does is he has brought the science back into fashion and science back into attraction. He cites hundreds of different scientific studies in this book and he really proves to you that dressing well can really have a tremendous impact on how you're perceived. In fact, there's a study in here that specifically illustrates this by showcasing how um, they took 321 uh, s surveys of women 200 of which were married women and 100 of which were college single women and they surveyed them and asked them and they showed them different slides of um, basically pictures they called them slides in the study but they were pictures of different men and uh, all across the board it was very clear that people who dressed low class who, who had a baseball cap and had just regular t-shirts were excluded they were less seen as less desirable uh, so much so that a further study uh, on this group uh, asking other questions found that the women who were actually interested in these men they, they basically were unable or unwilling to see the men who dressed low class as sexually interesting in any way whether it was for a casual relationship casual sex or a more long-term relationship like a uh, partner or husband um, and you know I just will kind of want to read it straight out from you from the text just to give you a real sense of this phenomenon uh, but I actually did that in another video and, and broke it down into a lot more detail so I'll cover it Go, go check out that video to cover it. Today we're just going to be talking about how a suit is, a first suit should be bought and purchased and how it should kind of go into, um, be considered. So first and foremost, when you are buying a suit, you have to understand that it is different from your second or third or fourth or fifth suit. Your first suit is really about a versatile suit that works for your lifestyle and can work for your situation. Therefore, your only two colors of choice are charcoal gray and navy blue. Now, I chose charcoal gray because of the age range that I am and the fact that I'm per usually perceived as looking much younger than I actually am. Um, I have been slighted many times by people who just consider me a high school student even though I am in, in my mid-twenties already. So, it just goes to show you that dressing well uh, can heighten your age and you know being talked down to or looked at uh, or not really respected or considered your age um, is not the best thing for you to do so that's why I went charcoal gray that's what uh, it emphasizes but if you if you're on the other end of the spectrum and 
uh, you have, you're older in your 50s or 60s uh, and you have that gray hair going, uh, the navy blue suit will make you look younger and it will help accentuate that, that sort of gray or aging hair, um, hair color. So that's why I chose uh, this color. You only will have two options because your first suit is mainly made for young professional events and made to be versatile for many occasions Most and really focus on the main common occasions that actually fit in your normal life. So I chose this suit because it really represented what happens through my age range and my lifestyle specifically. So I chose it through stuff that I will most likely be doing and that stuff that I have proven to be doing. So you don't want to try and put in stuff that you'll never do. I'll probably never go into a wedding anytime soon just because I don't go to weddings often. Uh, I don't get invited to weddings. So this suit is really just for uh, my career. Uh, showing up to networking events or just showing up and looking presentable at meetings. Now. For other people with other specific interests and events, that could differ. But generally speaking, charcoal gray and navy blue is so versatile that most occasions will make it work. Whether it's a really formal business situation or a more casual cocktail environment. Now, moving on further from that, other than color, the most important thing for a suit, no matter if it's your first suit or your 50th suit, is the fit. The fit has to be really good. Now. I did, I'm a researcher. I did tons of research before I bought this. I waited almost a year to buy this to get it at the right price with the right fit, ordered and delivered specifically online. You don't have to go through all that, but I kind of want to simplify what you really need to look for in terms of fit. I watched all the videos on how a suit should fit and it was overwhelming. It'll probably be overwhelming for you. And I don't think for a first suit you have to go into such finer detail because chances are you're younger, maybe you're a millennial or younger, and you are looking for a first suit that actually uh, just you know make, fits the basic necessities. Those subtle tiny details are usually when you have a larger budget and uh, those details actually get noticed. When you're a young professional, they don't really care as much. Other people you'll be interacting with won't perceive that and I knew that off the bat based off the people uh, and the you know the people I'll be interacting with co-workers bosses and so forth so with this suit um, it was basically about a few measurements that need to fit right if they don't fit right then you're not going to look as flattering as you can but if they do fit well they will accentuate your figure improve your shoulder uh, to waist ratio and do a lot of other things that will really dramatically improve your figure in general. So the first big thing that you want to look for are shoulder lengths. Do, do they cut off, and you'll see the seam here, do they cut off at the right time? Is it way too much or way too narrow? And if you go behind the suit and you feel for a bone, there's going to be a bone that juts out at the uh, at the ball and socket point where your shoulder starts to end and your arm starts to begin. I realize that this area of your shoulder, your shoulder physio physiologically is technically all of this, but what I'm talking about is when it ends here and then starts coming down here like a cliff. Um, you'll see it towards the back, it'll be a bone that juts out. And you want to make sure that bone aligns within an inch of where your suit cuts off. Uh, with, the, with, with the shoulder cuff. Uh, and so the margin of error is an inch. Whether it's an inch larger or uh, smaller, you want to make sure it's an inch lo longer because you want to accentuate that shoulder to uh, waist ratio and therefore you want that cuff to preferably uh, be on the upper echelon of one inch beyond where that bone happens. And it also helps so that when your dress shirt under it um, is slightly less than that. So it's maybe half an inch uh, beyond where your, that bone is so that everything fits and cascades in alignment. If it's all in one, then it won't fit as smoothly. So that's all you have to really know about shoulder. Uh, and then the other big fit thing is right here. You want to have the first button unbuttoned on a... Um, two button suit. If it's three buttons, then the order goes always, sometimes never. You never want to button the bottom button. And then once you do that, you want to see how creased and tight it feels. 
if you're seeing all sorts of tightness uh, and tension and you're feeling it starting to uh, suffocate you a bit, that's too tight. It means that the chest measurements are too tight for you. Try a looser suit. If you feel like there's all sorts of fabric here and you're swimming in it and there's folds of fabric, too loose, try a more tighter suit around this area. And of course you may have to get it tailored because stuff that come off the rack isn't as precise. For me, because it's the first suit, I got it off the rack. Um, so those are the two big measurements that you want to look for. There are other ones too. If you want to lift your arm here, you want to make sure that you can do it with a full range of motion without any type of extreme tightening around this area or folding or loosening. Um, or any crazy stuff now for a cheaper or more affordable suit that will happen and especially for your first suit so I wouldn't say it's as huge a deal for this um, again you're just looking for basic measurements and the top uh, fashion bloggers will tell you differently sometimes because they're incentivized to plug that ten thousand dollar suit or thousand dollar suit or even six hundred five hundred dollar suit for your first thing and that's the big thing when I did my research when I was um, going on forums and Facebook groups and and asking a bunch of people many were influenced by these top fashion advice uh, youtubers or bloggers and they're telling me that you have to spend five hundred dollars you have to go for the more expensive brands but um, I looked at my variables and factors and I determined that this was not necessary this suit cost me only a hundred and ten dollars uh, including tax and it's a J4R brand suit recommended by Aaron Marino of Alpha M. Um, this one's the, actually the uh, Super Slim Edition. And it did not cost me $500. I was fighting the urge to go to Suit Supply and pay for a $500 suit. But I realized that this was not necessary for my first suit. You know, even these uh, Allen Edmonds shoes that I'm wearing, um, they cost upwards of $300 retail brand and although I've gotten compliments on these I'm working with peers that are my age and th the truth is they can't tell the difference between a, you know a ten thousand dollar suit and a thousand dollar suit or maybe even um, what I'm wearing because they're not suit connoisseurs now is there a significant difference um, between my suit and shoes and such a big brand there usually uh, there usually is and you can tell it even if you're not you know an expert at this at some subtle level but when it's your first suit and you really have very limited limited budget like I do you have to hustle to get this to work right and those subtle differences aren't going to matter as much in your long-term career as hard work and dedication and salesmanship or just you know uh, entrepreneurship or whatever you you dedicate your life to maybe it's music maybe it's writing uh, maybe it's uh, engineering or uh, being a doctor whatever it is that's going to take you longer so that once you get that income coming in then you can pay for the more subtle details which are somewhat noticeable but not as noticeable as you might think or as uh, you know these people trying to sell you these higher brands let on um, they're trying to make their money too and even for these shoes that I'm wearing these um, these loafers that are Allen Edmonds, I didn't get these um, brand new. I got these used, and therefore I couldn't choose the color. It came Mel's Rose. I bought them off Facebook Marketplace for a small fraction of the price. I think I only paid about uh, thirty dollars for these shoes, which is uh, ten percent of the price because um, uh, they were a bargain. And of course, I had to sacrifice slightly on the color as well as the model and the uh, size but it was only slightly larger the color was still good it wasn't my first choice but it's a good second choice color and it was still fairly brand new so it still worked out for a great bargain price so that's that's the type of theme I, I'm going for with this um, now as far as um, what's most important in terms of uh, factors to look for in a first suit beyond what I've mentioned already is the frequency and uh, of your wear of the suits. Now I'll probably only be wearing this suit two or three times in a year which is not a lot at all. The less frequently you wear the suit the more of a toll that paying a high price for a suit will take on you. Now of course uh, if the more you wear it, if you're wearing it every single day then the quality matters a lot. 
and of course you still want a lower price but you should be paying for a higher quality suit so I really consider that into my formula I got this formula from Aaron, uh, Antonio Centeno of Real Men Real Style the the frequency quality and price are the three dimensions that you should really look at based off your lifestyle to see what, what type of suit you should buy and in my situation I elected for this hundred dollar suit which is probably the best I can get for that price tag in terms of quality fit and everything else um, because of the frequency which is very little uh, each time you have such a low frequency and you are spending more and more money it's just going to be a less of a return on experience for you so if you're like me and you're only wearing it two or five times a year keep it uh, on the low end, lower ends of price and that's contrary to what some of the top uh, fashion bloggers and youtubers will tell you or um, more importantly that's that's actually I got a lot of backlash um, from it from certain people uh, in uh, the Real Men Real Style Facebook group when I asked about that and they're like oh no you always gotta buy expensive suit but the problem is they were biased in my opinion because they they had a lot of money to deal with they had more money than I than my current income is uh, and slash or they're just so used to buying suits that they, they had become kinda like wine connoisseurs of suits in a way where they just they love fashion so much that they can't help but only promote good quality and that's a good thing to have when you have money of course because quality means that they last longer but this is what I had to go for with what I had and um, what the, for, the best thing I did the most fortunate thing I did was I asked for a second and third opinion so after about a few months I went on that to that uh, Facebook group again and I asked this time just you know talking about my experience and the fact that I really think that perhaps a lower price J Farrar suit and mentioning a brand J Farrar could work and this time all these people came out of the word work some of them younger in my age and they said dude go for it buy that $100 J Farrar suit don't splurge and spend five hundred or thousand dollars on a suit when you're really strapped for cash and that money could be uh, uh, invested in other avenues um, and then I got I even got a bunch of pictures of people who were where who who were wearing J. Farrar suits or who had just worn them recently to church or some other event and they were showing me that you know hey I've been wearing this suit for a few years now almost every week to church and it hasn't worn it still works it still looks perfect and I think you should really go for it I don't think it's as crappy a quality as people claim and I think it's it's a good choice and you know don't you don't have to go for an expensive brand I think this will work perfectly for your situation so that second opinion really made it work well for me I, I really consider think you should do something similar when you're thinking about buying a suit don't always go for that option where it's like hey you know, hey spend a thousand dollars even if you're rich and you have the money really think it through because um, more isn't always better. There's been countless videos about how they've compared Hugo Boss to suit supply and Hugo Boss has just been obnoxiously overpriced for sometimes less quality, less fabric, less custom stitching. So just money is better is just a shortcut, a guideline, but not always an accurate answer. Um, of course I do believe that I will be rich one day and from there I will likely buy a suit supply suit or something that is uh, better quality perhaps a navy blue suit uh, as my second option now another thing about suits is um, how they are displayed so with this one I learned from teaching men's fashion Jose Zaniga that when you wear a suit you do not wear it with a belt that was something I thought was the case I mean there's even belt notches here but he's telling me that with the suit no belt that's how it's done um, interesting stuff still debating that um, nonetheless I think in general that's how you how I bought my first suit uh, I really was tempted I, I went into men's warehouse I did a bunch of research on other suits I even went on eBay to see if I could buy a suit supply suit for less even though you know I couldn't really get in there and see it fit on me specifically but I ultimately elected to get this in January when the prices were the lowest um, according to the internet you know I, I did a bunch of research on the most affordable cheapest time to buy a suit what, what's interesting is that um, currently in January 
the prices are not any lower. They're probably just as high as most of the late autumn slash early winter time period. So I think um, a lot of the articles online are false about how um, the cheapest time to buy is in January. I think at least for department store suits, uh, anytime in the fourth quadrant of the year, especially around um, Black Friday, is just as cheap if not cheaper. And I held out during that time and I could have bought it for about the same price if not a little bit less, but I did not because I was told through all these articles that January is the time to buy a suit, but it turns out, at least from what I saw, I could have bought it during Black Friday slash that Thanksgiving week or you know the months before or after that for roughly the same price. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're looking for suits. There's also like really cool uh, free Chrome extensions that I've used successfully to buy stuff um, like Shop Tagger and that just will notify you online if there's any significant price drop uh, the way you want it. So keep that in mind. I think it's really important to go into a store and try on specific suits before you buy it and really make sure that they fit because even within the same brand, subcategories will have vastly different dif uh, differences in how they fit based off the measurements. So maybe a 30R j for r gray suit um, versus a 30R super slim, which is actually what I did try on in the store, were vastly different in their width and um, how they fit. Maybe the, the uh, in my case, like the shoulders were a lot wider, but then uh, it was a lot tighter here. So keep that in mind. Uh, and of course, within different brands, that might differ as well. Maybe not extensively, but there will be differences, especially if you're, um, if it's like a specific brand, like Michael Strahan's Big and Tall suit brand. Even if it's a 38R, a 38R um, Michael Strahan may be different from a 38R J Farrar brand. So just keep those in mind when you are looking to buy a suit. The final bonus tip I have for you is um, in terms of buying a suit, Make sure you, uh, you know, take the salespeople's advice with a grain of salt. I went into a men's warehouse and immediately this guy stereotyped me. He was completely wrong with his stereotype too, and he was he is he you know straight up told me that you look like you're in high school, you're going to prom soon, and you know you need a suit. And then he was he was trying to be cool and coy and be like. Uh, you should just immediately impulse buy that suit. That's not what he said, but that's kind of what he was hinting at. He was like, you're done, you're good, buy it. And I think he was trying to make a quick buck. At first, I thought he was actually an expert at suits and he was doing what was in my best interest because he was like, I've been in this business for a while. Just by looking at you, I know you're a 38R. In reality, after doing a bit of research online, I realized that no, to really understand a good fit for a suit, you really have to take the time to measure the lengths of different parts of your body and make sure they fit. Even the sleeve lengths are important too. You want to have a suit that um, ends slightly like half an inch before your arm, your uh, dress shirt arm break ends so that you have that thin sliver of room for your dress shirt to show um, like I'm doing now with my white Banana Republic dress shirt. Uh, however, he didn't do any of this. He was trying to make a quick buck, which I realized after I left the store. And he was too lazy to do any measurements. He was just like, oh yeah, you're 38R. I've been in the business for years. That's how I know. And at first I was like, yeah, yeah, you're right. But after some thought, I was like, maybe I'm not a 38R. And maybe you're just being lazy and trying to make a quick buck. He kept, he kept trying to say numerous times, you're done. You're good. Buy the suit. But... You know, I wasn't ready yet to make that commitment. Plus, he stereotyped me without asking questions. Another no-no kind of offended me too by assuming that I was this high school kid when I'm a lot older than that, which is something that happens a lot and something that a good charcoal gray suit will help you stand away from. It'll make you look more mature, older, and more your age. So that's it for this video. Hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Peace.